part one. You will hear a telephone conversation between an estate agent and a client. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello, Colvin Lettings, James Landsman speaking. How can I help? Oh, hello. I'm just calling to see what flats you currently have available to rent. Certainly, madam. We have a wide range of properties available, from studio flats to six-bedroom houses. What sort of place are you looking for? Well, a two-bed flat is what I'm really aiming for, but I'm open to other possibilities. Of course. Well, we'll see what we can do. What area are you thinking of? Either in the east side or the old port. I work in the center, you see, but obviously I don't really want to live in the center. Who would? But somewhere fairly nearby with good transport links there would be ideal for me. I see. When are you thinking of moving? It would need to be sometime before the 13th of September, as that's when the contract on my old place runs out. So before the end of September, then? No, the middle of September, the 13th. Oh, right, sorry. I thought you said the 30th. And do you have a set amount that you'd be willing to spend? Around £900 a month. Ah. Well, it might be difficult to find a two-bed flat in those areas for that price. Could you go up to 1200 well, I suppose for the right place, I could just about stretch to 1100 Hmm. And how about looking at places a little smaller, say a one-bed instead of a two-bed? I suppose I could. Uh, again, it would depend on the place. Of course, of course. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have a quick look at what properties we've got available in those areas and give you a ring back. How does that sound? That'd be great, thanks. Okay. I just need to take your name, if that's okay. Of course. It's Miss Beatrice Russell. That's Beatrice, B-E-A-T-R-I-C-E, -E, Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L. -L. Okay, great. Thanks, Miss Russell. And your telephone number? 0774-0922-1111. Let me just read that back to you. 0740922166. No, it's double seven at the beginning. O double seven? Okay, got it. I'll give you a ring back shortly. That's great. Thanks. Bye. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Hello? Hi, Miss Russell. It's James here from Colvin Lettings, just giving you a call back. Oh, hello, James. Thanks very much. What have you got for me? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the areas you're looking at are a little expensive for two beds. However, I found a couple of places which might be suitable. Okay. The first is in the Old Port. Great location, two-bed flat, available on the 12th. It also comes with quite a large garden, which would be great in summer. Okay. And how much is it? It's twelve fifty per calendar month. Ah, uh, that is quite a bit out of my budget. Yeah, well, that's the area for you. Uh, these days, it's very up and coming. I do have another place in the old port, which is a bit more affordable. It comes in at a 1000 a month. That's a bit more suitable for me. Yes, but I'm afraid this property is only a one-bed. But it's as spacious as a two-bed, really. Okay, that could be possible. When is it available from? From the 9th. Okay, that'd be fine. And the final property I have for you is actually in the centre. Now, I know you said that you didn't really want to live around there, but this flat happens to be on a quiet little side street 
and it's a two bed at nine fifty a month available from the eleventh. Okay, I could take a look, I suppose. Also, this one comes with a parking space, which is very unusual in that area. I'd prefer a garden, but I suppose that could be useful. I understand. When would be a good time for you to view the properties? Well, I'm off work from the first to the third, so sometime around then would be ideal. Okay. Well, shall we say the second then? We can confirm for definite over email. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Great.、Uh, can I take your email address? Yep. It's b dot russell sixty four at xmail dot co dot uk. Okay. Great, Miss Russell. I'll send you the email now. You have a look over it, and feel free to email me back with any questions you have. Will do. Thanks very much, James. No problem. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Part two. You will hear a council employee giving a radio interview about a town's recycling system. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fourteen. So, on the topic of recycling, our listeners will be well aware that a new recycling and rubbish collection system has recently been put into place in the area. We have Jane Brooks from the council to tell us here at City Radio FM about the changes. Jane. Thank you, Peter. Yes, as you say, we have a new system in place designed to help us all be that little bit more environmentally friendly and manage our household rubbish better. It's all about waste recycling, and as we all know, a new system is necessary to help us to protect the planet and our area as much as possible. We all need to do our bit. Local residents affected should have already received information packs detailing the changes through their doors. If any of you haven't received this, you can get hold of a copy in a number of ways. Our website, citycouncil.org, has a form you can complete to request a new one, or you can simply download a copy if you prefer. This is probably the quickest and easiest way to obtain a copy. They are also available at the library on Spencer Street. Just go in and ask any of the staff there for one. They're not out on display, so you will have to ask somebody. Please note that the changes are only applicable at the moment to residents under the CR10 postcode. Basically, everyone in the city centre and the main suburbs too. The information pack will tell you everything you need to know. Before the talk continues, you have some time to look at the questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen carefully. And answer questions fifteen to twenty. Some listeners are calling in with some questions about the new system. Jane, very interesting questions coming in, Peter. Now, some of you have asked about exactly what you can put in the yellow, red, and blue bins you have at home, and about the correct use of refuse centres. Let's start with the yellow bin. This is your main recycling bin. Meaning you can put things like books, envelopes, paper, and also newspapers, cereal packets, anything made from cardboard, really, in it. 
Although you can put some plastic items in this bin, such as clear plastic bottles, margarine or ice cream tubs, more durable plastics like pipes or old buckets should not be put here. Put these in the red bin. Larger items, even though they're made of plastic, like computer keyboards, must go to the refuse centre instead. Glass bottles used to go in the yellow bin too, but now you must use the mini recycling sites across the region, otherwise known as bottle banks or bring sites. Here you have to recycle by colour of glass, clear, brown, green, etc., and dispose of them in special containers, one for each colour. These bottle banks and bring sites can often be found in public car parks, supermarkets, etc. The blue bin is for organic materials only. Things like plants and weeds from the garden can go in here, along with waste from cooking and kitchen leftovers, potato and vegetable skins, that sort of thing. Each household has special biodegradable bags for the blue bin, so avoid using normal plastic bags or not using a bag at all. If you have bigger quantities of garden waste or rubbish left over from building work, you should take this to your local refuse centre. This, and not the coloured bins at home, is also the place to get rid of unwanted household items, including furniture, irons, fridges, freezers, hair dryers, old mobile phones. Some of these items can later be recycled once they've been taken apart. Everything else goes in the red bin, but be careful not to put too much in this one. This rubbish goes directly to a landfill site, so it's important to check if you can be green, so to speak, first. Every little helps. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 3. You will hear a discussion between two students about a book for a literature course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi Owen, isn't Susie here for the book discussion yet? It's just us so far, Rachel. Shall we make a start? The presentation is next week, you know. I know, it's come round really soon, so we'd better get organised. Right, so Joy Cares Sunrise Lake... I think we have to make some notes about the book itself, like when it was published, how it was written, uh, and an overview of characters too. Yeah, and remember we have to show our thoughts and feelings on the characters, the settings, the relationships. It says here in the study guide that that's essential. In fact, more important than anything else. So that has to be our priority. Let's start with some facts then. Publication. It came out in a weekly periodical that Care had founded before being published as a novel in October 1961. And that was in... December 1960, it says here. And it ran until August 1961. And it's important to note it was narrated in the first person through the point of view of the protagonist. It was Care's tenth novel but it was only the second she had written in this way, so that's noteworthy, I think. I agree. Let's highlight that. Right. And if I remember correctly, the story unravels in London in the first half of the 1950s? Spot on, Rach. What about the characters? I mean, Matthew's the protagonist. How would you describe him? For me, from the beginning, the character inspires sympathy. I mean, he's so innocent and likeable, and you just want him to thrive in life. 
I don't know that I felt compassion for him from the start, but once you come to understand his terrible family situation, the reader is just rooting for him to escape that and make it. We can't forget Sally Baxter, of course. She and Lucy are also key characters. Personally, I loved Sally Baxter, though she was rather eccentric, to say the least. So rich, yet wearing those old wartime clothes every day, looking to wreak revenge. I found her character quite eerie, actually. I don't agree. I felt quite sorry for her. Remember how she ended up that way? She was just heartbroken after the war, really. Though I must admit she had a somewhat odd character, and her behaviour was not exactly conventional. Well, let's turn to Lucy, Sally Baxter's adopted daughter. She was obviously damaged by living with her adoptive mother, and Matthew is so in love with her. But would you say that he really was? Or did she just represent everything Matthew strived to be? Wealthy, cultured, his existence could be described as humble at best. In fact, this could be the impetus that makes him strive for more from life. I don't know about that, but I think the affection was mutual. She just didn't know how to show it. Sally Baxter's treatment of her was so unfair, wanting Lucy to be bitter like she was. But she couldn't do that to Matthew. She was too fond of him. Hang on. It's a message from Susie. Ugh, she's missed her train, so she can't get here. She says we should plan the presentation and then let her know what we want her to do. She says sorry. It's a shame she can't be here. Let's decide who's going to do what, and then we can at least let her know. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, we've got to speak for 15 minutes in total, and obviously we need to divide that time into sections between the three of us. How should we start? For the introduction, I think we can do it in two stages. Before we discuss the basic plot overview, we need to provide our listener with some concrete details about the book, release dates, etc. What do you think? Sounds good. And we could make a PowerPoint with some slides? Great. I don't mind doing the first part, and we could put Susie down for the second. Sure. Then I can begin with the main points. An explanation about the role of Matthew, followed by some of the other characters. I think it would be great to show their appearance, demeanour, the settings. We could get some illustrations. Source some on the internet to incorporate into the PowerPoint. After that, we need to focus on the relationships between the characters. Absolutely. We could pick three main ones. We spoke about some of them before. Ah, and what about something audiovisual? Maybe we could get our hands on some video clips of the most famous key scenes to play in the presentation. From the film? I love the idea, but I don't know. We only have 15 minutes. Might they take up too much time? Maybe just one? Yeah, we can source one or two short ones to use as an aid. Do you mind if I do that part? Not at all. And Susie can give the last part, which I think should be about our own reactions to the book. Remember, that had to be a central point of the talk. OK. And as a summary, I personally think a lot of the social issues discussed are still relevant today in some ways. Let's discuss those we've identified in this part. Do you think that could work? We could use some images from the modern day that depict any similarities we pinpoint. Excellent. I don't mind doing that part. Then we each have two sections to discuss. Perfect. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Part 4. You will hear part of a lecture about SWOT analysis in business. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. A well-defined business strategy guides organisations by offering clear vision and direction. It can be defined to the business, an individual project or a business venture. If an overarching business strategy is implemented, then all employees can be assigned goals accordingly. This week, we are going to look at one of the oldest established frameworks for planning business strategy, SWOT, or SWOT analysis. Its exact origins are unclear, but many attribute it to Albert Humphrey, working at the Stanford Research Institute in an attempt to explain the failure of corporate planning. What is SWOT? It is an acronym for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Strengths being the characteristics of a business that would put it at an advantage to its competitors, whereas the weaknesses are those that would disadvantage it. The opportunities are elements in the business environment that the business could exploit to its advantage, whereas threats are those that could cause trouble. These could then be categorised as internal and external factors. The internal factors are the characteristics of a business that are able to be ranked as strengths or weaknesses. Think about the reputation of a brand leader. This is clearly a strength when compared to a company that is just starting up and doesn't have any recognition. Other internal factors include, but are not limited to, what the company is selling, whether that is a product or a service, how much they are selling it for, all of the staff in the company, the organisation's finances, output possibilities and so on. Obviously, these factors are all dependent on the organisation in question and there is no set list. A small accountancy firm would have a very different internal makeup to a large manufacturer. Moving on to external factors. These are the areas that are beyond the company. They are out there and exist and you can't change them. However, understanding these things that are beyond your control will limit your organisation's exposure to shock and ensure that you are ready for an ever-evolving business world. These factors include what your competitors are doing, changes in society and fashions, laws being passed and trends and factors in the marketplace. So, what are the main uses for a SWOT analysis? Existing businesses can perform one at any time to check the changing environment and react accordingly. Many companies perform a SWOT analysis once a year to review strategy. New companies should also perform a SWOT analysis as part of their planning process. This would help them to better understand both the need for their product or service and how equipped they are to fit into the marketplace. Also, many marketing departments perform SWOT analyses on all their main competitors. Performing this detailed analysis is essential, both for predicting upcoming challenges and also for finding out how to streamline your own business. However, it's not only profit-making companies that use a SWOT analysis. It has become a very useful organisational tool for charities, community projects and other non-profit organisations. It helps them to understand if an objective is viable and helps management to set achievable goals. So, to recap, the main benefits of conducting a SWOT analysis are that it is cheap and can be done by anybody. Secondly, it gives you a much better understanding of your company or organisation. OK, so we've looked at the uses and benefits, but there surely must be some limitations to this analysis, you ask. Firstly, it can oversimplify a problem. An effective SWOT analysis is short and gets to the point, and that doesn't allow for a detailed investigation. Secondly, it really is very subjective. 
It relies on somebody or a team of people making a judgment on what is good and bad. It is very difficult to get the same results all the time. The final and possibly most significant drawback is that all points are equally weighted in a SWOT analysis. It does not give more importance to some points that could be much more relevant to your business or its upcoming situation. So, that is a brief overview of the SWOT analysis. In our seminar later, we will be experimenting with performing an analysis on a well-known company and seeing how effective it is in practice. Now, let's move on to some alternative approaches that you may like to use. Who's heard of another alternative? That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet. Music